Welcome to Who Died Today America, your trusted source for honoring those who have bid us farewell. On this 3rd of June, we're not just delivering news, but saluting extraordinary lives that have touched ours. Today we acknowledge recent passings while paying special tribute to notable figures we've lost. Each left an indelible mark on our society and inspired countless others. Join us as we remember their remarkable contributions reflect on their impact, and celebrate the legacies they've woven into the fabric of our nation. In Who Died Today America, their stories live on. Stay with us as we pay homage to these remarkable lives and their enduring influences. Number 11. Raquel Welch, a seminal attractive symbol of the 1960s, passed away at the age of 82 on February 15, 2023. The cause of death has not been disclosed. Noted for her roles in films such as One Million Years B.C. and Fantastic Voyage, Welch was also an accomplished Broadway performer, having starred in hit musicals like Woman of the Year and Victor Victoria. Beginning her Hollywood journey with a striking poster from One Million Years B.C., in a doe-skin bikini, Welch became an industry sensation and the first major American attractive symbol of the 1960s. Welch's celebrated career not only revolved around her attractive appeal, but also showcased her remarkable comic touch, for which she won a Golden Globe for her performance in The Three Musketeers. Born as Jo Raquel Tejada on September 5, 1940, in Chicago, Welch was the eldest of three children of a Bolivian-born aeronautical engineer and an American mother of English descent. She embraced her Latina identity later in her career and learned Spanish in her 60s. Despite her celebrated attractive appeal, Welch notably refused to appear nude on screen, maintaining her personal boundaries and prioritizing her comfort. Her memoir and self-help guide, published in 2010, titled Beyond the Cleavage, spoke to her multidimensional career and persona, challenging her public perception. In the realm of personal life, Welch had been married and divorced four times, and she is survived by her son, Damon Welch, her daughter, Tani Welch, and her brother, Jimmy Tejada. A noteworthy moment in her career came when Playboy, in 1998, named her the third sexiest female star of the 20th century, right after Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield. While critics sometimes diminished her to her physical appeal, Welch's legacy is far more comprehensive marked by her talents, strength, and resilience. In the world of fashion, Welch was known for her unique style and substance, often advocating for authenticity over trendiness. Welch's longevity and influence in Hollywood are testament to her talent, resilience, and her commitment to being true to herself. Number 10, Jerry Springer, the iconic American talk show host and former mayor of Cincinnati, has died peacefully at his home in Chicago at the age of 79, as announced by his family on April 27, 2023. Springer's tenure in television was defined by the tumultuous, boundary-pushing, and globally influential The Jerry Springer Show, a program that both captivated and appalled audiences for its daring, often contentious content. Springer's career in television began after a notable stint in politics where he served as the mayor of Cincinnati. However, it was his 27-year run on The Jerry Springer Show that etched his name into the annals of daytime TV. Notorious for its brazen guests and shock-inducing themes like I Married a Horse or I Slept with 251 Men in 10 Hours, Springer's show broke the mold of conventional talk shows becoming a cultural phenomenon. Despite the show's frequently controversial and scandal-ridden headlines, it enjoyed a period of substantial popularity, even briefly surpassing the ratings of Oprah Winfrey's show. Springer's influence didn't stop at the small screen. His larger-than-life persona also led to a 1998 comedy film Ringmaster, a cameo in Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me, and even a musical titled Jerry Springer, the Opera. In his later years, Springer hosted the courtroom show Judge Jerry, and he served as a host of America's Got Talent from 2007 to 2008. Throughout his career, Springer often addressed criticism of his work as trash, 
with defiant rebuttals challenging the elitism of celebrity culture. Born in London during World War II to parents fleeing Nazi Germany, Springer moved to New York at age four. He later graduated with a degree in political science from Tulane University and earned a law degree from Northwestern University, setting the foundation for a diverse and noteworthy career. Jerry Springer, with his blend of audacious television and earnest politics, left a distinctive mark on American pop culture. His legacy serves as a vivid reminder of an era of television that pushed the boundaries of societal norms. His family suggests honoring his memory by making donations to advocacy organizations or simply by extending kindness to others in line with Springer's signature sign-off, take care of yourself and each other. Number 9. Lawrence Terman, a celebrated film producer best known for Oscar-nominated films such as The Graduate and American History X, died on July 2nd at the age of 96. Born into the golden age of Hollywood, Terman's career in the film industry took off in the late 1950s when he worked as an agent for notable figures like Joan Fontaine and Alan Pakula. His journey into production started with The Young Doctors in 1961. His filmography spans over 40 films, including The Great White Hope and The Thing. In 1991, Terman shifted gears to academia taking the helm of the prestigious Peter Stock producing program at USC, shaping it into a leading training ground for industry professionals. He held this position until his retirement in 2021. Terman received an Oscar nomination for The Graduate, a film that required two years and $1,000 to secure the rights to Charles Webb's novel. His dedication to the project resulted in a classic film that received seven Oscar nominations. Survived by his three sons, John, Andrew, and Peter, and four grandchildren, Terman's life and career are a testament to his dedication to film and storytelling. His contributions to cinema and film education continue to influence generations of filmmakers and audiences alike. His legacy includes a producing career spanning six decades, during which he brought to life some of the most significant films in American cinema. Number eight. Robert Sherman, a prominent figure in the New York radio scene, died at 90 due to a stroke on June 27th at his Ossining home. Known for his contributions to WQXR-FM, Sherman was a central figure in classical music and folk music broadcasting for over five decades. Sherman joined WQXR in the middle of 1950s, working behind the scenes before launching Woody's Children, a weekly folk music program in 1969 followed by The Listening Room and Young Artist Showcase in 1978. His interviews and live performances gave exposure to both seasoned musicians and newcomers, aiding in the popularity of artists like Jesse Norman, Itzhak Perlman, Robert Merrill, and Leopold Stokowski. Born to a concert pianist and teacher, Nadia Reisenberg, on July 23, 1932 in Manhattan, Sherman's interviews were known for their conversational approach. He developed a reputation as a welcoming host, creating an environment that helped newcomers feel at ease. Sherman also contributed to the musical community through his writings for the New York Times and his collaboration with Victor Borge on two books. He was also remembered as a guiding spirit at WQXR, a source of knowledge on the station's history and practices. Sherman's legacy continues through Young Artists Showcase, which remains on air, and his work's influence on classical music broadcasting. He is survived by his partner Jill Bloom, son Steve and Peter, and four grandchildren. Number seven, April Kingsley, the renowned curator who championed underrepresented artists, especially women and black artists, passed away on June 13, 2023 at the age of 82 in a nursing home in Harwich, Massachusetts. Her death was attributed to Alzheimer's disease, with which she had lived for 12 years. Kingsley began her influential career in the mid 1960s, shaping the art world from her positions in various museums and as an independent curator. She became a beacon for underrecognized talents offering them a platform through numerous exhibitions she organized or consulted. 
A memorable instance was the Afro-American abstraction in 1980 at the PS1 Art Space in Queens, which displayed the works of 19 black artists, significantly contributing to their recognition in mainstream art. James Little, an artist featured in the exhibition, profoundly acknowledged Kingsley's influence, stating, There is no person more important to the trajectory of my career as an abstract painter in the United States than April Kingsley. Born on February 16, 1941, in Queens, Kingsley's lifelong journey in art and academia led her to earn a bachelor's degree in art history at New York University in 1966, a master's degree and certificate in museum training at the Institute of Fine Arts at New York University in 1968, and a PhD in 2000. Her intellectual pursuits and curator roles took her to the Museum of Modern Art, the Pasadena Art Museum, the Sculpture Center in New York, the American Craft Museum, and finally the Kresge Art Museum in East Lansing, Michigan, from where she retired in 2011. Besides her work as a curator, Kingsley was a prolific writer. She contributed to publications such as Art Forum and The Village Voice and penned catalogues for the exhibitions she curated. She continued to shed light on underappreciated artists through her writings, understanding the struggles they encountered in a predominantly white, male-dominated art world. April Kingsley is survived by her daughter, Grace Hopkins, a sister, Grace Helene Dunnigan, and a granddaughter. Her legacy lives on through the countless artists she supported and the significant change she brought about in the art world's perception and conversation about underrepresented artists. Her tireless commitment to illuminating and amplifying marginalized voices will not be forgotten. Number six, John Haggins, a famed fashion designer known for his provocative and sinuous designs, passed away at his home in Queens on June 15 at the age of 79. Haggins was part of a group of celebrated black designers who rose to prominence during the late 1960s and early 70s. However, his career was fraught with financial struggles, causing him to close and reopen his business multiple times and leading him to reinvent himself in a variety of roles. During his heyday, Haggins created sultry matte jersey and chiffon ensembles, which were known for their revealing and risque design features such as plunging necklines and backs. His styles were greatly appreciated by Cosmopolitan magazine's editor, Helen Gurley Brown, who frequently featured his work on the cover. His designs were available in leading boutiques and were worn by several high-profile celebrities. Despite his success, Hagen struggled with business-related matters and had to shut down his business in 1972 due to mounting debts. Over the years, he attempted to relaunch his business several times but inevitably faced challenges that led to further closures. Apart from his ventures in fashion, Haggins tried his hand at a plethora of roles. He worked as a cabaret singer, soap opera actor, TV pitchman, travel tour guide, journalist, and was most recently the host of Globetrotter TV, a travel show on public access cable television in New York. Haggins' life and career were marked by his energy, confidence, talent, and a distinct pension for grand gestures. His creative legacy and impact on the fashion industry, particularly as a celebrated black designer, Will continue to be remembered. Number five, Wayne Evans, former professional footballer and esteemed coach, passed away suddenly at the age of 51 on July 2nd, as confirmed by his friend and teammate Martin O'Connor. Evans made a name for himself as a formidable defender for Rochdale and Walsall in the Football League. His dedication to the sport led to an impressive 183 appearances for the Saddlers between 1993 and 1999. After retiring from his professional career, Evans transitioned into coaching, sharing his wealth of knowledge with younger generations. He worked as an independent soccer consultant, the head coach for Nanaimo United FC, and a youth coach at various institutions, including the Penn Fusion Soccer Academy in Westchester, Pennsylvania. He eventually moved to Nova Scotia to further his coaching career, contributing significantly to the Shrewsbury Town youth team along with co-managers Peter Wilding and David Hughes. 
Evans made a brief return to the field in 2011, joining the Newtown side to compete against the Welsh Premier League champions, the New Saints. Throughout his career, Evans made an indelible mark on football, both as a player and a mentor. His sudden departure due to a heart attack has left a profound void in the hearts of his friends, family and the soccer community. His legacy will live on in the many players he has coached and the significant impact he made on the sport. Number 4. Mario Guerrero, a renowned Dominican professional baseball player, sadly passed away on July 2nd at the age of 73. An accomplished shortstop, Guerrero had an eight-year-long illustrious career in Major League Baseball spanning from 1973 to 1980, playing for four different teams. Guerrero began his professional journey by signing with the New York Yankees as an amateur free agent in 1968. His talent was soon recognized and after spending a little over four seasons with the Yankees farm system, he was transferred to the Boston Red Sox in 1972. Making an immediate impact, Guerrero won the starting shortstop job over Rick Burleson, marking the onset of an impressive tenure. He later played for the St. Louis Cardinals, the California Angels, the San Francisco Giants, the Oakland Athletics, and finally the Seattle Mariners, demonstrating his versatility and skills across the league. He retired in 1981, but continued to stay connected to the game, playing for the Winter Haven Super Sox of the Senior Professional Baseball Association in 1989, where he batted an impressive .315 in 15 games. Guerrero's sporting legacy was not just confined to his own achievements. His brother, Epi Guerrero, was a coach for the Toronto Blue Jays, highlighting a familial connection to the sport. Known for his prowess on the field, Mario Guerrero's passing marks the end of an era in MLB history. Number 3. Mini Bruce Pratt, American poet, educator, activist, and essayist, passed away on July 2nd. Pratt, who was born in Selma, Alabama on September 12, 1946, had an impactful career that spanned several decades, touching on themes of race, class, gender, and sexual theory. In 1977, she co-founded Woman Rights, a Southeastern Lesbian Writers' Conference. She was also part of Feminary, a Southern feminist writing collective. Pratt was an active participant in several political affiliations, including the International Action Center, the National Women's Fight Back Network, and the National Writers' Union. She was also the managing editor of the Workers' World Party newspaper. Among her many publications, Pratt's 1990 book, Crimes Against Nature, stands out as a revealing work in which she describes losing custody of her children due to her sexuality. She received the 1991 Hellman Hammett Award along with lesbian writers Christos and Audre Lorde for writers victimized by political persecution. Pratt had a significant presence in the literary and academic worlds and contributed significantly to social justice causes. Her personal life was marked by her marriage to author-activist Leslie Feinberg, who predeceased her in 2014. She had two sons from a previous marriage whom she lost custody of due to laws criminalizing homosexual activity at the time. Her sons, Ben and Ransom Weaver, announced in June 2023 that Pratt had been diagnosed with a severe health problem and was receiving palliative care. Her death was announced on July 2, 2023. Minnie Bruce Pratt's lifetime work in academia, activism and literature left a lasting impact and she will be remembered as a beacon of progress and courage. Number 2. Khosrow Hassanzadeh, Iranian painter, passed away at the age of 60 as announced by the Association of Iranian Painters in a statement on July 2nd. Born in 1963 in Tehran, Hassan Zadeh was a pivotal figure in the Iranian art community, with his studies in painting beginning at Tehran University of Art under the mentorship of Aden Agdashlu in the 1980s. Hassan Zadeh's works were celebrated both nationally and internationally. His paintings have been displayed across the globe and found a home in some of the world's most prestigious art museums. Among these are the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, 
the British Museum, the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Iran. His passing is a significant loss to the Iranian art community and the global art world. The AIP extended its condolences to his family and the Iranian art community, paying homage to his profound impact on painting and the influence of his contributions on generations of artists to come. Number 1. Anna Maria Bietti Sestieri, one of Italy's foremost scholars of early history, has passed away at the age of 80 on July 2nd. Bietti Sestieri had a storied career in archaeology, serving as the superintendent of archaeology in Abruzzo from 1995 to 2003. Following this tenure, she held the position of Professor of Prehistory and Early History at the University of Salento, where she was named Professor Emeritus. From 2003 to 2009, she served as the president of the Italian Institute of Prehistory and Early History, a member of the Lincean Academy and the author of numerous publications, Bietti Sestieri also worked as a manager for the museums and archaeological park sector under the General Directorate for Archaeological Heritage. Her career, beginning with Etruscology and later focusing on the Iron Age and the key site of Osteria dell'Osa, spans both government service and academia. In addition to educating numerous students at the University of Salento, she also held a leading role at the Italian Institute of Prehistory and Early History. Her research has been fundamental to the study of the Bronze and Iron Ages in Italy and its islands, with a special interest in societal changes, metallurgy, Mediterranean contacts, and a particular focus on the Fratesina site. Bietti Sestieri's passing is a profound scientific and human loss. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.